Yo, what's up guys? Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen you. Y'all are looking great. Um, oh, wow, that stuck together. Um, I just wanted to make a video kind of explaining where I've been, uh, what the channel direction is, where I see it going, kind of that stuff. The last video I think you saw was over a year ago. Here, let me turn this down. It was over a year ago. Um, I had actually moved. I bought an investment property. I bought a duplex um, a few towns over from where I grew up. And I moved in um, and I kind of house hacked it while I lived there. Um, so the Evo was blown up. I did not take it with me because I did not have the space to work on it um, at this place. Um, I do own it. I now have it rented out. Um, but I had to live there for a year to get the uh, first time kind of FHA loan program. I can, that's, that's a totally separate topic. But so, and I really didn't make any videos because at that time um, I was not into firearms or anything else like I really am now. So I didn't, I didn't record anything. I had my camera, I took pictures, um, mainly just for my Instagram, uh, but I didn't, if we went to racing events, it was just to spectate. Um, but now uh, the Evo is back running. Um, I do have it back. We did, it was a little bit worse than we thought. I had to replace the cylinder head. I had to, the block was, burned itself so we were able to go in there and TIG weld it and then redeck it um, so that was good found a bent rod um, so I had to get a brand new custom set of rods which financially sucked because Carrillo was the uh, really the only ones that made this spec because it's an English racing short block 2.2 uh, stroker engine I and mean, I suppose I can get going here too just to kind of update what's all been going on um, Hopefully that stays up there. Uh, but, so, we got the rods, got everything. My buddy hooked me up with machining. We uh, Another buddy, uh, I'll give him a shout out, B&M Performance down in Mankato, Minnesota, hooked me up. Uh, my buddy Chris, uh, the I don't know, CEO, the owner of, the, 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 of his business, him and Paul, um, he took the car in, they pulled the, the short block out for me. I didn't have access to a lift or anything and I didn't want to do it on jack stands um, myself. So this was, this was probably January, February timeframe. I hope this is still exposed okay because I, I can't see the camera on my Sony. Um, oh, by the way, I got two tickets on my way into work this morning. Check that out. One for tint and one for expired uh, tabs. So I got to get those done. Uh, but anyways, he took it in. So at that point, it was more of a waiting game for him. The car was at his shop. He just had it off to the side. Um, the first time I've ever had the car and it sit outside was this was just this past year. So I've owned the car for six years now. And that was the first time it's ever sat outside. So there was a single tear that you could see roll down my cheek. Um, but, so then I took it to another buddy of mine who did all the machine work, he hooked me up. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. Before all this, this was late, late, late last year, uh, when we found the scorched cylinder head and the uh, burnt block, another shop had it, uh, but they quoted, what they quoted and then what it actually ended up costing me was actually pretty close, but it would have been way more knowing what I know now, having to put another set of rods in it. Uh, Cause they're, they were, so they're, they're a, a, an Evo shop in Minnesota. Um, but his quote was a little high. Um, so I thought, well, I could always, I could do this for a little bit cheaper um, because my buddy was hooking me up on labor for the machine work. I figured even if I, even if I paid somebody to pull this out for me, knowing what the labor on the or the the machine work was going to be i could come out ahead so like i said my buddy chris now pulled it out for the second time pulled the short block out of the car the first shop just dis dis just disassembled and took the head off to see the damage um so blown head gasket damage block damaged head so now fast forward to current year 
my buddy Chris pulled the engine out. I brought it to my other buddy um, who was doing machine work for me. I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. And got that all taken care of. Um, my buddy had the machine, the machine work took a lot longer than I had, that we had kind of anticipated because he was doing it on the side. So he works at a machine shop, but he was doing it on his own time, which I appreciate. So it took, uh, I don't know, probably three months, three, four months. Yeah. About there. Got the engine back. Um, had to get a, a Mitsubishi gasket kit. So all this stuff just started adding up, but it wasn't a huge um, kind of expense at one time. So get the get the short block back, short block back, get it to my buddy Chris. They assemble it, they time it, they put it in. All of a sudden the car, it'll crank beautifully. It builds oil pressure. We've got conventional oil in it. Um, sorry, there's someone just about to cross the road. We've got conventional oil in it. Um, for the new bearings because it was a it was a complete refresh on the bot on the short block the crank had to be ground new bearings new rings pistons were okay thankfully um so but then where was i oh so so they the, it, it, it's in the car but the car won't start we think there's bad fuel drain the fuel still won't start check fuel pumps fuel pumps are priming the they have good voltage uh so Chris said that he had thought the injectors were clogged. I had just got the injectors cleaned like the last time before it blew up. I had it running for like 24 hours. So there was no, um, there was no like, I thought that there was gunk in the uh, injectors, but they literally sat for a year. So E80 ethanol goes bad much quicker than gasoline, than traditional gasoline. Either way you want to treat it. But I left the injectors in. Uh, the intake manifold for that whole year and it was in the elements there was moisture kind of swings or whatever so Chris thought the injectors were bad okay I'm like do you have a set that there that you can swap in so we swapped in he had a set of uh, injector dynamic 1700s swapped them in and the car fires up so okay proving a point that it was the injectors so I get the injectors send them out to FIC uh, three of them came back good. They were able to get them unstuck and, and cleaned out. One was bad, wouldn't unstuck, wouldn't flow, wouldn't match flow at all. Uh, so I had to buy an injector from them. Uh, get the injectors, or I'm sorry, while we while I shipped the injectors off, we got I went and got the car from Chris, loaded up on the trailer with his injectors, which was an absolute night, nightmare with the injector scaling from 1700s because there's 2150s in it right now. Absolute nightmare with the injector scaling to get it on the trailer. There's, you'd hit the throttle and the thing would just lean out. Um, and it would die. Get it on the trailer, whatever, get it back home. Get the ejectors back from FIC. You had to buy a new one, which is fine, whatever. Uh, can't You can't put a, a, a set in that isn't going to be data matched across the board when you're running that kind of power. Um, so get the injectors in, get them in the car, fires right up. It's perfect. I do some braking miles. They recommend a lot of um, vacuum pulls. So you want your car in vacuum, like going down hills. So I was just doing laps that around uh, around my town, going down hills uh, with the car in like third gear, uh, pulling a vacuum on itself to get those rings to see really good. Of course, braking oil plays a, a lot with it, that as well. Um, so I did like I don't know 15 miles, but so that's where we're at with the Evo. So I moved. Oh, God, I, I, I'm such a bad storyteller. I moved back from uh, my duplex that I had bought. That's where we're at currently. Um, However, I'm really in between a rock and a hard place right now. I, I, I have the Evo listed for sale in one spot. And I don't, I really, I don't know what I want. Um, obviously this car I've built a relationship with, I've had it for over six years. I've taken it literally from 265 horsepower all the way up to where it was performing at the 700 horsepower, 700 wheel horsepower level running low 10 second passes. Um, on a full street trim, I did have slicks though. So you have this emotional attachment to this mechanical being, um, and I know car guys can understand. And I've, I mean, I've got way more invested than this car is worth, but sentimentally, it's worth. Did I say that right? Sen sentimentally, sentiment, sentimentally, it's worth way more to me. But I'm at a lot. I'm at this point where. I'm tired of spending money on it. Um, 
I just would like it to work. And I know that's partly my doing. I, I'm, if I if I keep it, it's gonna be retuned and the boost is gonna be turned way down because that was at 42 PSI on a Force Performance Zero Turbo that we were making on that power level. Um, so I'll turn it down like a 550, 600 wheel horsepower, which is a perfect streetcar level, but there's so many things I would do differently. So then it's like, do I just, do I sell it, wait a while, get another one and then do it what I would have done, which was probably an Evo 9, do an Evo 9 turbo, some bigger injectors, a, a dual pumper or a double pumper fuel setup and make 400 wheel horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque, something like that. And just be an absolute ripper of a streetcar because the thing would spool like mad with an Evo 9 turbo. Now that, not that the FP0 spools any slower. Well, it does spool a little bit slower, but now I'm rambling. But so you're, you're emotionally attached to a vehicle and that's kind of where I'm at. It is listed for sale right now. Um, I'm not gonna advertise it anywhere. It's not going on Craigslist. It's on a Facebook forum. Um, and I'm kind of doing that because I'm still really on the fence of whether I wanna sell it or not. And then what do I get from there? And I know my hobbies have shifted a lot because for that year I was gone, I didn't have the Evo. I just, I have my, my Jetta here, which is not fast. It's, it's, I've got almost 40,000 miles on it already from commuting a year because that's how far away I worked. So I can't even keep up with the, the depreciation value of this car, even though I just bought it a year ago. So what would replace the Evo? Well, there's really only two cars that I would get three cars I would get to replace the Evo and they're much more of a kind of a step up but I would really not modify them to the extent that I did the Evo I would not do a stroker kit I want something that's factory fast something that you can get in it's got AC I took AC was in the Evo but I took it out because diehard race car guy AC sucks it's power robber it's like a people who, who have race cars understand that you just don't use AC even though you have it because it robs power and all that stuff so a GTR a C6 Z06 or ZR1 or a Camaro ZL1 1LE and I'm really leaning towards the 1LE my I've been a Ford family my whole life I would love to have a 2020 GT500 but financially I don't think I could pull that this doesn't, this YouTube channel doesn't make any money. I don't make any other money besides my day job. So, which also leads me to, to my next segment, where we're going with the channel. If I could, if I could keep doing automotive content, well, I shouldn't say that. I would love to video everything I do, but firearms is a big part of who I am now. Being a more capable citizen, training, whatever. Just, that's just who I am. If you don't agree with that, that's fine. You don't have to like guns. That's where I'm at. But I feel like there's no secret that YouTube hates guns. It's just a, it's just a fact. Um, it's very difficult to be monetized and have a gun channel. Whereas automotive content, I could just, I could just stop putting gun content and leave that more towards my Instagram, which I can link right here if you're not following. I'm actually doing a giveaway right now for a um, Enforce APLC light in black or FDE. The winner chooses. All you have to do is follow me and then tag, a, your entry is tagging somebody in the comments with unlimited entries. So the drawing is picked on that uh, next Wednesday, the 31st. So go ahead and get on that if you haven't. But I feel like I can, I, can get, I can keep the gun content more, even though Facebook owns Instagram and they equally hate guns there as well. I could keep that content more geared towards firearms and then YouTube towards automotive content. But then it's like, if I sell the Evo, then I don't have automotive content. So I'm kind of, in, like I said, up in between a rock and a hard place, but I wanted to update you guys all with kind of what's going on, what's my thought process currently, and what to expect from the future, kind of. Uh, if the Evo sells, I'll probably be waiting a little bit before I purchase anything. Um, if it doesn't, where would you guys like to see it go? What, 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 what questions or what do you want to see done? I, I kick myself every day when I bought that car six years ago that I didn't document the build process of, of that car from literally taking it to 256 wheel horsepower to uh, 700 uh, wheel horsepower running low tens at 442 pounds of boost. I was so pissed at myself. I did most of that stuff myself. The only thing I didn't do to that car was build a short block and that came from English racing like I previously stated. Um, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know what you wanna see. I, I, 
if, if we want to hang on to the Evo, the thing is, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's so clean. It was a southern car. There's literally zero rust on it. And the thing is an absolute ripper. So I'll be doing some break-in miles. Maybe I'll take you guys along and we can have another conversation. Um, but let me know what you want. Let me, I shouldn't say that. Let me know what you'd like to see. Do you want to see the Evo stuff? I know there's a couple other Evo YouTubers. This thing's already built. So it would just be, it would just be filming events or I don't want to say street racing because I, I rarely take the car out and it needs to be retuned and after I get the break-in miles done on it. Um, but I could video anything that you guys want to see. Let me know what you think the uh, replacements, what do you think of those? Um, I'm really, really a big fan of the 1LE Camaro. Uh, that thing is just, it's getting me right now. Um, and it would be that or a 2020 GT500 and I just can't swing that financially. The ZL1, the 1LE is depreciated down to a, a little bit of a point that I could swing. Um, and the GT500s will probably, I don't know, they're going to be so up, up in demand. There's going to be dealer markups on them, and there's just that's just something I can't afford right now. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at. Evo is for sale right now on one spot. Anything that you guys want us to see, my daily life, what I do, whether that's firearms, guns, vlogging, training, shooting, driving around, ripping the Evo, the potential replacements, filming... I don't really film car content uh, outside of my own stuff. Um, let me know. And uh, I just want to make this video for the three of you that actually are, are watching. Again, let me know what you guys want to see. Any questions, comments, concerns, give me a follow over on Instagram. Get into that giveaway for that weapon light. And uh, hopefully more consistent uploads, maybe. Uh, if not, enjoy your weekend, guys. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next one.